Hey everybody, welcome back to Best of the Month. My name is Z Garcia, and in this video we're going to be telling you about some fantastic new to us games that we played over the month of June and why we like them so much. So here we go, I'm going to kick things off with my pick, my, uh, my favorite game that I played in June, and that is Sentient, coming out from Renegade Game Studios designer J. Alex Kevin whose games I've always enjoyed, and I, I, I always look forward to his new designs, but I have to say Sentient blew past my expectations with how fantastic and tight and puzzly it is. It is uh, The theme is very thin, really. It's about programming robots in some sort of futuristic setting, but the way you manipulate dice, the way you uh, play cards between dice and have them uh, work towards scoring conditions on those cards. The way all the gears turn, basically, everything fits so perfectly. There is nothing extra, nothing is wasted, nothing feels out of place. The whole thing has been, feels to have been machined to perfection. And that is why I like Sentient so much. It scales well, it's got a great look to it. Truly fantastic game if you enjoy puzzly gaming experiences, so check that one out. Hi everyone, Tracy the Gaming Maven here. So my best of the month game for June is Lignum. It is designed by Alexander Humer, published by Capstone Games, at least this version is. It, it plays two to four players in about 90 to 120 minutes. So it is a pretty heavy game. You've got the first path that you walk before you go to actually cut the wood down. And that basically it's two years, so four seasons uh, for each year, so a total of eight turns. But the walking the path to prepare for everything and then the actual cutting, sawing, selling of the wood. It's got a lot going on. The mechanics themselves are quite easy to pick up, but it can be a lot. My brain was pretty gooey the first time I played this. So it was uh, it was quite a bit to take in, but I highly recommend it because it's got so much cool mechanics, so much uniqueness to it that I hadn't seen in other games before. So if you know someone who's got a copy, I recommend at least giving it a try for a season or two. And with that, we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, my pick for game of the month is Near and Far, published by Red Raven Games. It was designed by Ryan Lockett. Yes, Ryan, I said it right this time. <laughs> and it was also, I believe he also did the illustrations. So this is really great. So it's very familiar to a lot of you ha who have played uh, Above and Below, which I actually don't own, but I really think I need to get after playing this one. So it's, you know, those adventure storytelling type games. So you can go on quests and it's really cool because you can read from the book. So you have another player that reads from the book and you can roll to make sure that you have enough either strength or skill in order to complete the quest and there are even bonuses that you can acquire from these quests. So the board is really neat because you can gain money and jewels by creating, uh, by building tents. Uh, so these are great resources to complete some of the object objective type cards that you have. On the main board, you have actions such as gaining explorers or adventurers, I should call them in this game. And you also can go to jail if you try to attack other players and are not successful. So I thought that was kind of interesting. My favorite action on the board is to build the tents. So when we played this last, Stefan was building those tents like crazy in the mine. <laughs> and those are great because it gives you uh, a lot of bonuses, monies or monies, ah, the gold coins <laughs> or rubies. So that was a favorite action for me. But overall, I really enjoyed the game. The quests were fun. Just the whole atmosphere was fun. It was an easy play, not overly complicated, which I liked, but I still felt like there was something to the game. So Ryan, awesome job on Near and Far. Uh, I like the fact that other tokens can be flipped and used in Above and Below, so when I'm ready to buy it, I can use them there too. So if you haven't tried it, check out Near and Far. See you next time. My game of the month is Tief Taschen. This means deep pockets in German, and this game is so much fun. It is a simple little card game in which you're all corrupt politicians, and each round the president decides how to divvy up money, and then everyone votes on whether they agree with that or not. You can eject the president, you can try to steal money from the people, you can blackmail others, but it's just all this stuff that's often done in much bigger games comes down into a really short 30 minute or so game for four to eight players. Phenomenally fun. I played this game tons of times at Dice Tower. It was my go-to game to carry around and teach people and haven't had a bad game yet. Entertaining, love this game, Tief Taschen. 
Hi everyone, Stefan the Games Teacher here, and my favorite game of the month for the month of June is Through the Ages, published by Czech Games Edition and designed by Vladja Švatel. Uh, plays two to four players in a really long time. Uh, so I got to demo this game at Origins 2017, working for uh, Czech Games Edition in their demo area. Had a blast, they had to pry me away from the tables. Uh, they couldn't get me to stop demoing the game, so that tells you how much I really enjoyed it. Um, if you like civilization building games, this one's probably for you. It's a little bit unusual in that it doesn't have a map. Uh, so you have to kind of imagine the map in your head, but it's a really fun game building your civilization through the tech trees and the cards. So check it out from Czech Games Edition, no pun intended, and we'll see you next time. Hello everyone, my name is Annette, and you may know me as Netter's Plays. And my favorite game this past month was Near and Far. Now, Near and Far is a game that I backed last year, and I finally got it. So as soon as I got it, I had to play it, and I loved it. The cool thing about Near and Far is the fact that it's a sequel to an already existing game that I already enjoy. It's called Above and Below. Now, Above and Below, if you're not familiar, is a game where you kind of play it as a regular board game. However, there's a thick book of stories, and you go through the stories, and you encounter them, and then you have different kind of ways of resolving that story. Now this game is a sequel to that. You also have an encounter book where you go through the stories. However, you also have a map book. So in this game itself, it's a little bit different because you're going through the different maps in this book and you're exploring and you can go to different locations, do different things, and the book itself goes and evolves with the actual maps. The cool thing about that too is the fact that you can play near and far in several different modes. Unlike above and below where you only play it one certain way, near and far you can play it in four different kind of ways. You play the beginning mode just to kind of show you how the game is played. You play the arcade mode which you can play the arcade mode if you don't necessarily want to get into the story or if you've already exhausted the book and you don't have any more stories to go over. Or you can also play through the campaign mode, which you play through the whole map book and you play through 11 maps and it's a progression of the story. You go through the whole story book. Another way that I've really been enjoying playing this game is through the character mode. Now, you pick a certain character and you play through that whole character story. So you get to find out the meat and kind of the back history of these characters themselves. And you could develop them and play a game on the table and just kind of learn and listen to who you're playing with and why these characters act these certain different ways. It's really awesome and it's unique and different unlike any other game I have. And that's why I've really been enjoying Near and Far. It's Roy Candy from Epic Gaming Night, and my best of the month is Near and Far. This is a follow-up game to Above and Below from Ryan Lockett with amazing artwork and great like stories within the game. It takes like what Near and Far had as far as stories does and injects even more stories into the game. And the stories like follow like a progression as you go through the different maps. One of the things that I love about this is that there's this giant like fold-out book of maps where you can flip through and play on the different maps as you're going through the different campaign. You can upgrade your characters a little bit with different things to help you get better like economy for like doing your different artifacts and things like that. Lots of interesting decisions to make as you're running around the board trying to get more pieces of the story and make little trade routes to get points and recruit more people for your faction and try to get over the guild leaders onto your side so you can get points. Lots of interesting aspects of near and far and that's why it's my best of the month. Hello, I'm Jason Peacock and I'm here to talk about the best game I played in the month of June. Now, I was going to pick this one right here, Colosseum. This is an old game by Days of Wonder that was remade by Tasty Mitchell Games, and I heard a lot of good things about it, so I picked up a copy to see what all the buzz was about, and I really love this game. Five, after, five hours after I was done playing, I was still thinking about the game, and I was thinking about the next time I was going to play and what I was going to do. Any game that can do that to me is wonderful in my books. I only played it the one time with my eight-year-old and my wife, and I'm quite fond of it. But just the other day, I got this guy in 
Century Spice Road by Emerson Masucci. I'm sure you've all heard about this game. Now, I told my wife this was getting a lot of comparisons from Splendor, a game she really likes. So we taught each other the games. We had a bottle of wine. We played some black keys. And we just fell in love with the game. My wife asked to play two more times after that. And we just had the best time. We wake up the next day. And she's requesting to play this game again. So it gets a lot of comparisons to Splendor. But the one that I like to make is that it's such a good game to introduce to people and maybe get them into games if they're not already savvy with the hobby board gaming world. So that's my pick. Century Spice Road. Turning cubes into different colors and buying cards has never been so much fun. I'm Jason Peacock. Thanks. Hey folks, welcome back to another best of the month. This month, uh, my favorite game of the month was this guy right here, Tournament at Camelot. Now this is a trick-taking game and it is actually a highly thematic trick-taking game, which heretofore, in my opinion at least, was not to be heard of anywhere. Trick-taking was just simply trick-taking, but this one actually takes the Arthurian Legends theme and weaves it into how you actually play the game. It's almost an anti-trick-taking game because you don't want to win the tricks because tricks actually are going to be causing you damage at the end of the tournament round, and whoever is the first person that loses all of their health first ends the game and then whoever has the most health at that point is the actual winner. But uh, there's uh, also some other stuff. There's godsend cards where the person who has been knocked down the most can actually have some extra powers in the next tournament round. It's almost, you know, it's a catch-up mechanism basically, but there's just so many good things about this game. I really enjoy it. Everybody that I show it to so far has been raving about it. Some of them have even gone out on their phones automatically while they're still playing the game to purchase it. So if you haven't had a chance to try this one out, it is a must try out. If you like trick taking games, especially so, my best of the month tournament at Camelot. Hey friends, Chubby Meeple here talking about the best game I played in June of 2016. And this was a tough one for me to decide because I played a lot of great games at Origins in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, really wanted to give the nod to Founders of Gloomhaven, but chose not to because it was a prototype. Uh, but keep your eyes out for that one. The game I chose to talk about for best of the month in June of 2017, I landed on Century Spice Road. Uh, this is a great little uh, kind of a set collection game. Um, and it sounds, just description, it sounds really boring. You're collecting cubes to trade those cubes into then buy point cards. Um, but it's it's really tight mechanically. Um, you have four actions. It's really simple to teach and play. Uh, you have your four actions where you are either drawing a card to add to your hand, you're playing a card to collect or upgrade cubes, you're playing, you're turning in those cubes to buy point cards, or you're resting and picking all your cards back up. It's that simple. Uh, the first player, uh, once the player, a player takes the fifth or sixth point card, depending on uh, number of players, you total up points, and the person with the most points is the winner. A uh, fun little game. Uh, I've played this a bunch of times. Um, played it a lot at Origins. Um, actually played it with Tom and with Joanna, the um, uh, winner of the Jag Vassal Memorial Fund auction. Uh, played with her uh, and uh, did it there. Played it here at home a lot uh, with my kids. Um, my older daughter likes it a lot more than my younger daughter does, but the younger daughter will still sit down and play it. Um, but if you've not had a chance to check out Century Spice Road, definitely do so right now. I think I'm playing this one at Over Splendor. Um, I know a lot of people are calling it the Splendor Killer. Um, I would say, I don't necessarily say it's the Splendor Killer because I still do enjoy Splendor. This is hitting the table a lot more than Splendor right now, but we'll see if that holds true when the um, expansions for Splendor hit later this year. We'll see if it puts Splendor back on top of Century. But for right now, best game I played in June 2017, Century Spice Road. And that's going to do it for us, everybody. A big thanks to all my contributors. Big thanks to you for tuning in. I hope you found at least one new game you can check out, maybe become a new favor for you yourself. And I'm going to see you again in a, in a month for our best New to us games coming out of July, so we'll see you then. Take care. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. Cool Stuff in Stock. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower.